Hi, my name is Dahlia Ashtree and this is Seneca Someone. Today I have with me Triple Threat Paula Todd, who's an author, a lawyer, and investigative journalist. Thanks for joining me, Paula. I'm thrilled to be here, Dahlia. Paula, what made you want to become an investigative journalist? You know, you don't set out to be, I didn't even set out to be a journalist. I didn't even know that job existed. I sort of fell into it. But an investigative journalist is somebody who really has done news reporting a lot. So you start as sort of a cub reporter and you're sent out to cover fires. And you know, you need to be accurate, you need to be timely, you need to know how to either broadcast or, or to write very quickly to get the news out. And then you spend time as a news reporter, generally, this is what happened to me, I became a political reporter, spent a lot of time traveling, analyzing politics, and as you become more and more experienced, you sort of, it leads up to becoming more investigative. And, and what that tends to mean is there's, there's not a press conference that you go to cover. Generally, you're looking for a story that people don't want you to find. And so you need to use all of the skills that you've built during your career, plus you need to learn a lot more skills. So for example, digital research, uh, as you know, is a, is a very important skill to have when you want to be an investigative reporter. As an investigative journalist, who's the most interesting person you've ever interviewed? That is a really tough question because I've been in this business for more than two decades and uh, often my time on television was doing a daily live show, you know, for 15 years, different shows obviously, but interviewing two, three, four, ten people a day. Uh, so there, there have been thousands of people I've interviewed and I know people like to say someone famous, you know, and I've interviewed famous people, but I think some of the most interesting interviews I've ever done are with people whose names you wouldn't recognize. People who, I mean, I'm thinking of, of a man right now who was uh, kidnapped, who's a teacher and kidnapped and tortured in Ethiopia uh, when they decided to round up all of the academics and he was tortured by uh, a grown man who had actually been his student and you know t hearing from him what it felt like to have endured all of this and to have come out stronger on the other side I mean there's nothing more fascinating I have to admit though that I have interviewed uh, several psychopaths in my life uh, in one in Penetanguishene uh, but being able to spend time with Carla Homolka because nobody had ever really interviewed her one-on-one uh, -on -one for any length of time it was one of the most strategically stressful interviews I've ever done. She's quick and she was very angry that I had found her. I wanted to stay in her home. I knew that the minute she asked me to leave that I had to leave according to the rules of, of journalism. And so I had to keep the conversation going, but at the same time, you know, be really careful because I had no idea what she was capable of. What piqued your interest in Carla Homolka? You know, I, I I hadn't had much interest in Carla Homolka, and she, she'd uh, been gone from Canada for five years when I managed to track her down. I, I was, the reason I went after Carla Homolka wasn't because, you know, oh, where is she and nobody can find her. She'd been gone from Canada for about five years. I had been reading online as part of legal research that I was doing for another book that she was teaching, allegedly, young teenage girls the same age as the ones that she'd helped Paul Bernardo kidnap and torture and kill, including her little sister. They were all, you know, in that 14, 15, 16 year range. And Carla had done her time, but it felt very odd to me that as Canadians, we would just say, okay, go off to another country. And if you are putting, you know, other lives in jeopardy, we don't have any more responsibility. As a lawyer, I understood uh, our time in the criminal justice system with her was done. But as a journalist, I thought we have a higher obligation. And so I went to, to determine whether she was in fact, you know, teaching these people and let Canadians decide. Paul, thanks for joining us today. It's been such a pleasure, Dahlia. Thank you. I've been speaking with Paula Todd and this is Seneca Someone.